Yeah, so uh, with me is uh, Philip Kossen, and uh, maybe you could introduce yourself uh, sure. to our crowd. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I'm Philip, and some of you may know me. I've been involved with the Silver Rudder pretty much from day one. The first year I was here, I was a spectator, and then I either raced or at least been enrolled and participated for the following six years. Yeah. I mean, the event is the highlight of the year for me. Mm. Um, I'm not racing this year for the first time in six years in that I've sold my little Impala 27 and bought an Impala 36, waiting for new sales, got to get some of the uh, old anti-fouling off the bottom and we'll be ready to participate next year. Um, some of you may know me because I'm sort of like a front figure. I'm responsible for some of the rules, the participants lists. I'm the guy that you communicate with when you write to. I'm generally the voice behind mm. the emails that you get and the, the Facebook uh, sites. But uh, let me make sure I don't take any credit for what I'm not doing. There's a huge setup of volunteers behind this event and there's literally close to 100 people, a lot of them are old age pensioners, retirees, that help out. And it's absolutely amazing that we can gather that kind of energy and this kind of event is such a small town mm. like Swimble. Um, we originally, as you know, sold 450 uh, start numbers and we could have gone on. What is the number right now? And we've had a lot of cancellations due to the uh, adverse weather conditions getting here. But we're out down to about 380. Oh, which I mean, if we can get 350 people on the starting line, they're yeah. still absolutely magnificent. Is it the biggest one yet? Uh, we'll see how many people start tomorrow. Yeah. We've still got plenty of space in the harbor for more boats. I'll let you know tomorrow. Mm. Yeah. How do you feel staying on shore? Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. I, I, lo I love the fact that I can be here and you know enjoy the atmosphere, but not being able to race, not being able to sit there fiddling with my knots, you know, whipping and making sure my sails are set and ready. It's murder. But this is fun too, you know, being here and being a part of the setup, talking to you guys, talking to the racers seeing people's you know fine specialized trimmer sets oh, it's incredible so it's a pretty good compensation yeah. so what's the hardest part of staying on shore just watching other sail or? i think probably the hardest part is i'm gonna have to sit there looking at a tracker instead of looking at the ticklers on my sail and what was the hardest part when you were sailing so uh... mm -hmm. yeah um i think i'm the kind of person who wants the race to be sort of underway all the time i want to keep going so my biggest challenge in any race is I've raced since I was a very, very small child, is uh, very light winds. In extremely light airs, I tend to get restless. Mm -hmm. I had actually said to myself that if the, uh, if the weather was really, really light this year, I would bring a guitar with me. But I played the guitar so badly, I was concerned about, about the welfare of the participants. So, uh, so uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm always challenged when there's too little wind. I'd rather have too much wind than too little wind. And uh, in, uh, from your point of view, uh, what we are doing here, our, our little tribe that is growing bigger and bigger every year, how do you see it? I mean, it's great. A community within a community. It's not like you're setting up your own setup. It's absolutely amazing that you want to come and be a part of, of the Silver Brother. I mean, we love the fact that you, you guys are here. Uh, the Swedish community, community have done something similar. And we were contacted very, very early on after the uh, enrollment process, way back in, in April. I said, can we have the names and phone numbers and email addresses of all the Swedes? Yeah. We want to invite them out to dinner. So there's, there's like uh, 20 Swedes that are going out for dinner this evening. So, mm -hmm. so it's great. We love it. We love the fact that you come back every year. Huge. Perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You started it. And now ah, we're, we're really, really pleased to be uh, that you're part of it. It's great. Thanks. What is currently the biggest concern for you? Well, we're not hugely concerned this year. The weather forecast looks good. Prices are ready, the sailors are trickling in nicely. I think everything's pretty much in control. So it's nice to be able to stand here at this time, you know, a few hours before the skipper's meeting and say that we're pretty much in control of things. There are no surprises, okay. not yet at least. No, we're happy. You know, we're happy with the weather forecast. That's always our most, in, our, our major concern is the welfare and safety of our sailors. I mean, last year was, was tough going mentally um, to see, to see, you know, you see the weather forecast and see the way way some of the um, perhaps less experienced sailors handle the extreme weather conditions. Um, so to be quite honest with you, we're not really that concerned this year. It's just going to be a huge party. It's really great, great to hear that. It's great. Yeah. And would you have one last piece of advice for our sailors, for all the sailors? Definitely. Yeah, If because if, after last year, I sat down and started writing an article about um, how one prepared, prepares for a race like this. And I'd say that the best way to carry out and actually complete the silver rudder or any distance race of this length is to chop up the race into edible or yeah. consumable uh, short distances so if, if let's say uh, hypothetically if we were going east i'd say my first sort of 
major target would be the Great Belt Bridge. Mm -hmm. That's going to take me something like six hours, depending on the boat, yeah? yeah. And my next target would be Ear Blue, Apple Island, the north of the moon. I know I'm going to hit pretty big waves there and there's going to be counter winds. No, that's quite a big challenge. And it's getting dark by then. And my next point would be like um, entering to the Little Belt and I'll have to make sure I'd study the current then. And my next goal would be, you know, sort of the flight home through the islands, the archipelago in the south of uh, yeah. South Korea. So it wasn't a short piece of advice. It was mm. chop your race into three, small four, effort. five small pieces and sort of consider it to be a personal achievement mm. every time you've completed one of those. Plenty of food and drink. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I wish a you a good race. Yeah, great. You and, too. Uh, we'll be on the sideline. Exactly.